students i am your science teacher noshi nagravi today we are going to learn about the chapter animals everywhere in this chapter we are going to learn about habitat and its types feeding habits in animals movement in animals breathing in animals and last animal migration so let us discuss them one by one dear children this world is full of amazing animals they live almost everywhere land mountains cold regions hotter regions and even in our homes animals live in their surroundings and these surroundings are called their environment and within this environment they have occupied a particular area and this area provides them all the basic necessities of life like food water shelter and everything whatever is required for their normal survival and this area is called their habitat so how can we define habitat a habitat particularly is defined as an area within which a particular animal lives and where it eats grows and reproduces when we talk about an example of a habitat it can be anything it can be a large space it can be even a small area for example if we take an example of a forest forests are having a variety of living organisms like monkeys lions tigers hornbills but they all occupy a particular area they don't live all together they live in their separate spaces and this is now clear that they make their home within its habitat so we have a variety of habitats for different types of animals so broadly if we speak about the habitats habitats are mainly of two categories terrestrial or land habitat and the second one aquatic or water habitat when we talk about the animals which live on land they are called as terrestrial animals and those animals which live inside the water they are called as aquatic animals terrestrial habitat includes polar regions mountains deserts and forests well as aquatic habitat includes oceans and rivers that means mainly fresh water bodies and salt water bodies dear students it's not necessary that uh, a habitat is always a large area it can be even a small puddle filled with rainwater or even a single tree can be a habitat of variety of organisms so there are billions of animals living around this world and every animal is having a special feature and these special features help them to survive in a particular habitat let us take an example of a camel a camel lives in hot and dry conditions they won't be able to survive in ice covered regions while well as if we talk about the polar regions which is completely covered with snow their polar bears can live very easily because their bodies are having some special features which help them to survive in those extreme cold conditions if we bring a polar bear from those areas that means snow covered areas and let them survive in the grasslands they won't be able to survive in the grasslands as well so all these features these animals have to live in a particular habitat to survive under the extremes of the environmental conditions those features are called as adaptations now let us move ahead to our next topic that is feeding habits in animals so let us see how animals obtain their food what are the categories of different animals how they can obtain their food talking about the animals all the organisms living organisms on this earth need food for their survival so food is the basic necessity of life then coming to the categories before discussing the categories we know every animal is having a specialized mouth parts which help them to eat the type of food depending upon whether they eat plants or whether they eat animals because there are only two sources of food it can be plant or animals can eat other animals as well for their food let us discuss the first category that is herbivores herbivores are plant eaters like cows sheep goat etc they have broad flat teeth which help them to chew their food 
when we talk about carnivores carnivores are those animals which eat flesh of other animals they have sharp teeth strong limbs which help them in killing other animals and obtaining their food when we talk about omnivores omnivores are those animals which can obtain their food from both plants as well as animals when we check their features of their mouth they have both types of teeth they have flat and broad teeth to chew the food as well as they have powerful canines or sharp front teeth to tear the flesh of other animals coming to the next category of animals that is scavengers scavengers are those animals which do not go for hunting they usually eat the flesh of the animals that are already dead for example vultures are there hyenas are there so when once a carnivorous animal has uh, killed an animal for its food then what is left over will be eaten by the scavengers now we will see the two specialized features of two different categories of animals those are birds and insects so let us first discuss about birds birds have beak for obtaining their food and their beaks are modified to the type of food they eat for example if we will see the beak of pigeons and doves they usually eat seeds and their beaks are pointed and sharp when we talk about the hummingbird it is having a long slender like beak because they have to suck the nectar from the flowers because they have to visit many flowers they hover around these flowers and suck the nectar from the flowers then coming to the pelicans which have a pouch like beak these pelicans usually uh, scoop the fish from the water and that is why their beaks are adapted for such type of uh, killing of other animals coming to the eagles eagles have sharp hooked uh, beak which help them to kill their prey and then easily they can eat it then coming to the insects this group is the largest of all the living organisms living on this earth insects are also having variety of uh, food habits or you can say they can obtain food different uh, insects can obtain food from different sources when we talk about butterflies moths and bees they suck nectar from the flowers as since they are having straw like uh, mouth parts then coming to the next category of uh, insects that are dragonflies they eat other insects some insects can even suck the blood of other animals and uh, examples being mosquitoes and these mosquitoes are having needle like mouth parts or a needle like mouth which help them to suck the blood of other animals dear students you might have even seen on the road side or anywhere if the garbage dumps or heaps of garbage are lying around then flies are uh, thrive there why because it becomes their breeding ground for their growth and for their survival Let's now discuss the next subtopic that is movement in animals how animals move first of all what is movement movement is change in position but the question is why animals move animals can move in search of food water shelter to avoid harsh weather conditions or even they can move to find a suitable place for their for breeding purpose or for reproduction we will categorize all the animals in three uh, subheadings first let us discuss about those animals that can fly in this category we will discuss about birds insects and bats first of all insects they have two pairs of wings and three pairs of legs which help them to fly as well as walk talking about birds they have wings and to make their flight easier or flying easier they have hollow bones which are lighter in weight they have flight feathers which help them to fly easily and their legs help them in hopping perching as well as walking you might have seen a bird which is having a leg injured is not able to fly why because these birds first have to hop a little and then they can take off so their legs are used for taking off then coming to the bats bats are the organisms whose bodies are not covered with feathers but with fur 
and their wings which help them to fly they are covered with the flaps of skin now let us discuss the second category of animals that is animals that can swim in this category we will discuss about those animals which live inside the water for example first of all fishes fishes have fins and fins with the help of tail they can change directions and move easily inside the water then coming to the penguins they have four limbs which are modified into flippers which help them in uh, swimming inside the water on land they have legs which help them to move or walk then coming to the whales whales again have flippers for their movement then frogs and ducks they all have webbed feet for swimming inside the water and uh, frogs also have the hind limbs which are long and strong and they can easily hop on the land with the help of these hind limbs coming to the next category of uh, animals that is animals that move on land land animals can walk they can run jump hop slither when we talk about those animals which live on land they usually have limbs for their movement crocodiles and lizards they have limbs but they crawl on the ground when we talk about the other animals like uh, snakes they do live on land but they do not have limbs in a state they have scales as well as they have flexible muscles which help them to slither on the ground easily coming to the uh, human beings human beings we know we can walk we can jump uh, we can do many activities with our feet because we usually live on land so we can do number of activities not only with our legs but with our hands as well because our hands help in balancing our movements suppose if you tie your hands like this and uh, i will tell you to move around with your hands tied like this then it will be very difficult for us to walk or for you people to walk why because hands help in balancing our movements you might have observed when you walk or when you run it is easier for you to walk when your hands are like this or your hands are not tied at all then when we see kangaroos and rabbits they can hop why because their hind limbs are strong enough for hopping on the ground then the next topic which we are going to discuss is breathing in animals we will see how animals breathe how they obtain air from their surroundings because air being the necessary part of the life or you can say the basic necessity of life how they obtain air so air is very important and different animals or different living organisms have different organs for their breathing let us discuss first about insects insects have small or you can say tiny special air holes or tubes called spiracles and these spiracles are present throughout the body and with the help of these spiracles they are able to breathe properly then aquatic organisms aquatic organisms like fish crabs prawns they have gills gills are rich in blood supply what happens in the gills how they can take oxygen and how carbon dioxide is released and these gills being rich in blood supply what happens oxygen from the water passes in and carbon dioxide passes out coming to the amphibians like frogs and salamanders these frogs and salamanders they have lungs for breathing on ground but once they go inside the water they have moist skin for their breathing even earthworms can breathe through moist skin talking about human beings and birds they have lungs for breathing for obtaining air from the surroundings let's now discuss the last topic of this chapter that is animal migration migration is the movement in large groups so talking about animal migration they there are some birds and animals which can migrate every year from one place to another place in search of food to avoid harsh weather conditions or even to find a suitable place for reproduction when we see a bird named as arctic tern which is a seabird it travels the longest it travels from north pole to south pole and then back to north pole every year 
in the winter they travel from one uh, pole to another pole that is from north pole to south pole and back to the south north pole uh, thousands of kilometers they travel every year to avoid the harsh weather conditions and then once the temperature is favorable they go back to their original places that is why they are also called as champions of migration we can see other examples of migration as well like we have bar headed geese which lives in tibet but once the winter arrives in tibet they fly over the himalayan mountains and reach to several parts of the india then coming to the next category that is elephants which are large animals which live in the african grasslands and these animals move from uh, one place to another place even they travel the longer distances in search of water particularly in the summer talking about the aquatic organism that is whale whales travel to the colder parts of the ocean for their food and they travel to the warmer parts of the ocean for reproduction so this is the reason why animals migrate why they travel from one place to another place so dear students i hope you have enjoyed this lesson see you in the next lecture thank you